And thanks for having me on, too. Seeker and or its affiliates are not responsible for any strange phenomena that may occur during or after listening to this podcast, no, this which may disgusting. include the following no, heightened happened. senses of awareness, psychic abilities, UFO sightings, alien contact, time loss, out of body experiences, ringing in the ears, ESP, lucid dreaming, increased synchronicities, astral projection, telepathy, stronger intuition, levitation, miraculous healings, and or remote it's viewing. Please be advised to listen. It's here at the click of a button, we cross the planet. Won't you come? How long you been doing the podcast? Ready? Oh, you can't hear me? Truthseeker.com. She's not a Christian. Give it up, y'all. Your portal to the paranormal, esoteric, and all things spiritual. She's tampering the dark sided stuff. And now, your host, Truth Seeker. Yo, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? I'm your host, Truth Seeker. This is the Truth Seeker Podcast. Excited and delighted to be with you guys today. We got an awesome show planned. This is the double header. We did one this morning. We got another one today. So uh, putting out content, man, staying busy with this stuff, man. I, I love it. I enjoy it. Uh, slam pack day. We did the School of the Mystics tonight as well. Good stuff. So uh, awesome show planned for you guys. I can't go any further without thanking my Patreon supporters because without you guys, I couldn't do this. Thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. Um, quick shout out to the two latest patrons today. Even, uh, we have Shannon Lewis who uh, was over in the school of the mystics tonight as well. And we have Jonathan Santiago. Thank you, brother. I know you've been following my work for some time. Thank you for the friendship and thank you for jumping on board to support my work, man. It means the world. So if anybody out there wants to support what I'm doing, you get all of my music, which is 10 plus albums. All of the new stuff that I'm working on as soon as the track is finished, it's uploaded to Patreon. You get exclusive interviews. You get all kinds of cool stuff. You also get access to the Thursday night School of the Mystic Sessions, which is the community aspect to what we're building here. So good stuff, man. Thank you guys for supporting. Thank you guys for the continued support from the bottom of my heart. Um, today's guest, somebody who I've been looking to talk to for some time now, real big fan of his music, his art, his work, what he's bringing to the table consciousness spirituality and i say christ consciousness on top of that we're gonna welcome to the show heaven razor peace 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 wings up wings up man what's going true, on true man? true seeker man we want to get up with you do this for the longest man and Wu-Tang affiliate man like legendary what you guys have, have brought to the table with sons of man um i think it's pretty uh, safe to say that Along the lines that I'm doing what I'm doing today because of the influence of you guys and what you all have brought to the table, man. Every single one of you guys, Wu-Tang, Killer Priest, you, Sons of Man, LCOB, The Lost Children of Babylon. Uh, thank you for being you, brother. Thank you for coming to the show, man. I'm, I'm, I'm looking welcome, forward to man. this one. We love to support shows like this because this is what's needed today. Definitely. To get that, get that truth out there. That's what it's about, man. And as far as truth is concerned, um, you have an awesome story. I think your story in general will inspire the nations. Not can not just say the youth, but I think your story will inspire the nations. It is the uh, documentary just came out, the Risen documentary. We can go into that a little bit to kind of set up your story. I think that would be a good place for us to start, man, for people who 
don't know who you are, so people who are new to your work, uh, go ahead and give a little background about what you do, who you are, and what you bring to the table, man. Um, I'm a hip hop artist from Brooklyn, New York City. Um, from the from the youngest man member of the Sons of Man group, which was the first group of the Wu Tang family tree on the Wu Tang record label, Wu Tang Records, and um, we branched off from that and just kept going into you know dropping for, um, solo solo projects after that. It's me, um, Killer Priest, Prodigal Son, Sixty Second Assassin. And uh, we all dropped solo albums after we dropped the first album was um, The Last Shall Be First. We dropped The Last Shall Be First. Then we came back again with another one, which was called Savior's Day. And if you don't got neither one of those albums, you're missing out on some really good hip hop music. And I advise you to do some digging and some research and some treasure. And uh, you'll come up, you'll be crazy happy with what you find after that. Yeah, definitely got to do your homework. And uh, like I said, man, we always pay homage. And like, I love to just shout the names of the people that inspired me. Some people, they don't like to do that. Like they don't, you know, they, they're like really tight knit with their fan base and they don't want to cross promote and stuff like that, man. But the work that you guys have, have put out, man, has inspired me to be doing what I'm doing again, brother. Um, You had uh, some complications come up back yes, in 2010 indeed. that was documented pretty much in the risen documentary that just came out if you want to talk a little bit about that kind of unpack it a little bit what happened yes. in, in, in 2010 what you went uh, through seven years of recovery and where you are now yes in april april 6 i believe it was 2010 i had just finished my um heaven raiser album i had um put out first finally went solo and then I put out my two solo albums. One was called Razor's Ladder. I dropped the Razor's Ladder first, produced by Blue Sky Black Death. And then after that, I had dropped the Renaissance Child. So, so I finally put out my solo because my fans were like, I want to see how Razor drop an album by itself now. And um, so, so, so I had I had dropped that. We had just did the Black Market Militia, which was me, Killer Priest, Timbo King, Tragedy Gaddafi, and William Cooper. We had put a project out together, the Black Market Militia. And after that, I had put out the Renaissance Child, my first solo album. And then um, the Renaissance Child came out because I was preparing. Renaissance pretty much is a rebirth. So I was preparing in 2007, I was preparing the atmosphere for the, for the change coming. I let them know, like, I'm about to do this. And um, Razor's Ladder was taking you up the ladder. I was taking you up the ladder, let you know I'm going to come back down. It's heaven raising. And um, when I started working on the album, I started when I finished the album and turned it into Nature Sounds, I suffered from a brain aneurysm. I had a brain aneurysm. I was at work when it happened. And um, I had a brain aneurysm and survived. I survived the brain aneurysm. And um, from then on, the beginning of my documenting, my story was wrote from, from that day. And we started filming from this, all the way from then. And uh, the, the Risen, my documentary movie, Risen, the documentary of Sharon Hellraiser Smith, began. And uh, the trailer is out. Yahoo, Yahoo had, um, had premiered the uh, trailer for the, um, for the movie. It's, um, it's, a, it's a already the Rugged Man video. If you didn't see it, you should check that because that's 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 a little introduction of what the film is going to be about. It's a heavy film, very lots of emotions is in this film as too, but it's going to introduce you into my history, and um, because I was the young, I was a young young one amongst my older brothers coming up when I was doing this. I was like 17, 18 years old when I was in in and when I just got to the Wu Tang, and um. You know how hard it was to be a 17-year-old person and you got to keep up with your older brothers and they, they, they're they ready to do it and you you like you still learning? And it made me work extra hard. Extra hard. That's why when it got, got down to my solo albums, it was a lot of hard work because I was on my own for that. I had to write, write my own stuff. I had to do everything by myself, pick my own music. I was on my own from there. So it got that's when it got real. So when that happened, you 
lost control of the whole left side of your body when you had that well what had happened was and the only way to save my life at that time for the surgery they had to go into the right side of my brain to clip to, to clip the bubble from reaching my brain because i would have killed me if, if it would have popped it would have reached my brain and popped i'd be dead right now and they, they had to go into the that to the, they went into the right side when they cut into the right side it you know, the right side of your brain controls the, everything on the left side and vice versa. The left side of your brain controls everything on the right side. So when they went into that side, you know, it's, it, it uh, affected the left side. Okay, man. It's deep. And like you said, the, uh, you know, the, the, um, the trailer for the documentary is, is very emotional just watching the, the trailer. And I'll put the link to all that in the description so you guys can check that out afterwards as well. Thank um, you. There's a website for the film too. Risendocumentary.com, definitely. Yep. Yes, indeed. Share that out. Um, and I want to say thank you to everyone that's been supporting supporting us because this is some real heartfelt work that we're doing here. So there was a um, a transition before all of this happened, right? From going from Hellraiser to, to Heaven Razor. Ha- exactly. What what that's, was that transition, man? What um, it? I had, um, it's like, as I, I was growing up for one thing, like when I just mentioned when I was 17 was when, I, when this happened to me, it was ironic. I just turned 33 when it all happened to me. I was at my 33 and, um, that's when it happened. I had turned 33 and that's all this when happened. It starts, man. We just talked about that tonight in, the, in our class. 33. And that, that's heavy. That's that's the heavy. That's the that's the transition right there. That is that's the transition for for a lot of things. So life. was it was it just something spiritually that you that you were going through? Was it just like spiritual? most most definitely it was yeah. spiritual because I was preparing it. Well, my fans was catching it first early because they're like, "Well, did you have? Did you know what you was doing?" I like why you say that. They say in your music, you were saying certain things yeah. that we made. We kind of felt like you knew what was like. They, they thought it was premonition, premonition, yeah. premonitions happening. And um, it kind of was, though. It's just so funny because now when I go back and listen, I'm like, wow. You know, it's certain things I say in my lyrics that I'm doing today, right now. That I'm like, wow, this was wrote in like 2008, <laughs> 2009. How, how did I do that? And um, 10 years, like 10 years ago. And um what had happened was I had moved away from the city. And I said, cause, cause I was like, I got to concentrate on music more because, because I wanted to get more. I had just um, came back from tour and I was like, but I was buying my studio equipment. So I said, I got to get away from the city so I could just start recording. I just want to record music all the time. That's all I wanted to do. And um, I said, it's best for me to get away from the city so I could concentrate on music. And that's what I did. And I was like, I said, I gotta get deep into my spiritual zone and um, you know, quit the quit the quit quit the the things that was distractions. And the only way for, for me to do that was the was to move. And when I got away, it's it's just it's deep because that's when I began the Heaven Raiser album. What was it though, man? Did you have any encounters? Was there a still small voice? Did you know that the life you live in, you wasn't gonna be living much longer. What was it, man? Like, what was that come to Jesus type moment, if you want to call it that? It was kind of like, it's, it, I was bugged out that you said that like that. Because it was a growth for me. It was a growth for me. And um, I was growing because I was traveling more. And I just came back from a tour. I was traveling more. And I was doing more and more by myself now. Because I was like, you know, growing up, I was finally seeing everything that and experiencing by myself now. I was learning a lot. And it came as an introduction first to me for my lawyer was had to talk with me about it. He just was like, how did we had a we had a dinner? He actually said, I want to talk to you about something. He said, have you ever thought about um he said, You ever thought about a name change? I said, What you mean by that? He said, "No, you you should you should Hellraiser should be your brand." I'm like, "What you mean?" He like he like you 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 know what you could do with that. He like you could you could create that into a label. 
I'm like, I never thought of that. I never, I never thought of anything like that. He said, yeah. He said, I think that's something you should, you should look into. Because he's like, I'm watching you and all the stuff that you're doing, you're pretty much doing the stuff that a label should be doing for you. Yeah. I, I'm like, wow, I didn't know. He like, you because you, you invest into yourself with your tour money and everything you're doing for yourself, you're pretty much a label now. And I didn't even see it. And um, I just loved what I was doing. And um, but then I paid attention to what he was saying. And I said, this is making a lot of sense. And um, so then that's when I started my record company. It was called Hellraiser Music Inc. This was way back in, it had to be about 2004 sometime or around that era. 2004 era. Because um, I had put out a project on the label at the time. It was called the Ultra Sounds of the Renaissance Child. That's when I first started it. Because the ultrasounds are something the baby that you look at the baby to see the um the, what the baby gonna be and all that before before it comes out, and um I was setting them up with that way back then because I did the ultrasounds of the Renaissance Child. The Renaissance Child was the first solo album I put out with with Nature Sounds, and um so when I did the ultrasounds was the first release on my record company Hellraiser Music Inc. Incorporated as the label, and uh, that was the the very beginning of the introduction of the atmosphere for the name change. I was preparing it, and then the, the next thing that came with the um, Razor's Ladder on uh, Baby Grand went to Baby Grand mm -hmm. with the Blue Sky Black Death, and uh, we did the um, Razor's Ladder album together. And now, now I was like, okay, now I'm going to take them up the ladder, um, because I'm because I'm about to introduce the name change to them. And um, it was steps. I had to do it in steps instead of just doing it. And then they're like, well, well, I don't understand why would he do that? Because they would have been confused. Like, I don't get it. And I mean, I didn't plan for an aneurysm and all that to happen. It just happened yeah. the way it happened because I was working. I was doing a lot of, a lot of, a lot of work. And um, it just happened. Yeah, even before that, man, y'all's music has always been spiritual like spiritual uh, exactly esoteric like we're talking about chariots of fire we're talking about supernatural angelic encounters we're talking about ufos and aliens we're talking about all types of different spiritual stuff that you you don't you're not really just born knowing you're not going to get off of the television some of this deep esoteric philosophical knowledge man where did a lot of that stuff come from? Was was you repeating what you heard, or did you guys actually do the knowledge? Did like who did you study under? I, I definitely can hear Hebrew Israelite roots. There's comedic Mostly. sciences. You know what I'm saying? There's a little bit of everything in there. What were some of the things early on that was kind of like your foundation for spiritual growth and consciousness and stuff like that that you put into well, the music? Like you just mentioned, the Hebrew Israelite influence was heavy on him because I got introduced. Killer Priest was my yeah. partner, and he was teaching me. <laughs> he was teaching me. We 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 practically lived together during the time of the uh, what album was that? The Heavy Mental album. We was doing the Heavy Mental album when he did when he did his album Heavy Mental with Geffen Records. We would, all we do was was study. All we would do was study and create music all day. And uh, that's all we would do. We would do studying and, and creating music. And then that's when we did, a, we did, a, we did Heavy Mental, and then we did the Sons of Man album, The, um, the Last Shall Be First. We was working on all of that at the same season. We did that together. And um, the study, that's all we would do, was study, study, study all the time. Like, we was talking about Illuminati in yeah. 91, <laughs> 92 sometime when nobody knew what the hell that shit was. Yeah. They're like, yo, what, what, is, what, is, what is this y'all even talking about? Because we had, we, back then in the early 90s, we had met um, one of them. What's his name? Anthony Hilda. We met one of the guys, the Jordan Maxwell, the, the main two. Yeah. We had met them personally in California when we was recording the um, the Sons of Man album. And uh, we had, we had, um, Cause we had moved to LA to, to to record Heavy Mental and to do the Sons of Man and Last Shall Be First. We had to move away from New York to to record our albums. The late the label said we want y'all to move here, so so y'all can focus on your music. When we had moved there, we that's all we did. But we would go out there 
We go out and to the bookstores. We always like we we wanderers. We like we're going over here. We're going over there, and we had met one of them, and he was explaining, tell, telling us about all this stuff. We like this is where, and uh, because we already knew a little bit about it, but we like that's that's you you the guy, and it's like oh it's that he bugged out because we we knew who he was and he he bugged out off for us. He's like y'all 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 do y'all know about him, huh? But yeah like, yeah we do a lot of research man and um. Like when like it's a song on Killer Priest I'm heavy mental. I think it's called Tai Chi. Uh the song is called Tai Chi. I said it's nine six, beware of biochips. My ears hit harder than slave whips, like I waited to give tips from Egypt to sea ships to being chased by New York cops out the priests. If words was bricks, we building projects and pyramids, evil kids, I destroy you like London Bridge, smoke trees of weed, take over leaves out the twigs. Per truth is what I got to give, a lot to live for. You ain't rich before poor, it ain't peace without war. How would you stand without a floor? Under, over. And I said, it's nine. So that means in 96, we were talking about microchips and nobody even knew it. I know, man. I caught a lot of that stuff later through through the, the Hebrew Israelites. Honestly, that was my first um, my first entrance from like Christianity into some of the deeper things of like Christianity is only going to take you so far, but it's when you want to get into the deeper esoterics or even want to learn how to study the scriptures. Like you really got to get with another sect. So mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you know them, but uh, I was with the, the light and body of Christ church, the gathering of Christ church, brother Rakar Shiar, which was mm -hmm. GOCC. They were all white. Going and out there. Mm -hmm. and are they in the LA? They in Miami or, or um... I think they were in New York. Philly. Philly. There's in Philly. 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 Yep. And then you got Tazadakia, all of those cats. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I, I learned under all that stuff. So those guys, I don't really keep up with those guys anymore, but they, they imparted something to me on how to study the scriptures and stuff and like the microchip stuff. Like they were, they were preaching that in the streets in like 2006 exactly yeah. exactly and you remember when it was that whole y2k thing was going on yeah in the early 90s they was mm -hmm. talking about the 2000 and the y2k was coming and um that's when it all began and um that's when it all got started and that's how we got it on to it because i got introduced to a lot of them when i was young and uh, cause I was with priests all the time, and he's an elder, and um, he would like introduce me to all these cats, and I'm like, wow, wow, and they would just talk to me, like you know, you want to talk to you, little brother, and they was <laughs> telling me these things, and I'm sitting in there soaking it up, and yeah. then I would go after I'm hearing, I would go and study. I'm like, I'm like that was real interesting what he was saying, but it makes a lot of sense, and I'm gonna see, I'm gonna gotta go verify what he was saying because yeah. this is this don't sound like he playing around with what the, what the information was now did you then, get into any of the other pamphlets or any like some of the hindu stuff or whatever because like in the end you kind of find out that a lot of these different religions the ufos the elohim the cherubim mm -hmm, like we're mm -hmm, all saying because, the know, same thing right one, one, one of the things you know? i have found out um what, what this was when we was in la um, there was a, some somebody that I found out about. Um, I think it was um, she was Hitler's teacher, and I think her name was Madame Blavatsky. Blavatsky, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, she had wrote this book it was called the Theogenesis, and um, she was going deeper into the into the, she was going into the esoteric world, deep deep deepness of the of, in, in, in Genesis and the whole scriptures. And it was it was odd because I'm like, hi, I'm like, so she was teaching, she was his teacher. This is so he knew the truth. So I'm like, this is interesting now. So now 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 I find out Hitler knew the truth, who the Jews was. This was crazy now. So I'm like, okay, now it's making a lot of sense. Now everything is starting coming together now. And um as I got older, I started getting introduced into more people, and I'm like, okay, okay, this is heavy now. Like it's certain things that was right in front of our face that we didn't even see. Like Sammy Davis was saying he was a black Jew. And this was way in the 70s sometime. That's deep because you mentioned Jordan Maxwell 
and Jordan Maxwell used to kick it with Sammy Davis. They have pictures together, them partying together back mm-hmm. in the day. And see, you like the first person that 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 ah, because I, I remember we found that out and somebody was like, No, nah, that can't be true. <laughs> and we like you like, yes, it's true, man. It's he he been on it way back in the day. And um he knew it. He's he, that's the rat pack. It was him. They always like that. Them dudes was um the same way, who else it was? Uh, I think it was Kennedy was with what's her name? Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. Yeah. Kennedy and they told and he told her about the 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 aliens mm-hmm. and the UFOs. And that's when he got killed after that. Yeah, because he started speaking about it. <laughs> he was, was talking too much. And they like he, yeah. uh, he talking to he's telling too much now. And um that's exactly what why they why they got him. And, um, so with like studying, researching, it's all over the place. It's in all the esoteric books. It's in the holy books. Every single one of them, UFOs, aliens, chariots, all of this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, reading about it's one thing, but have you ever had any encounters? Have you ever been stargazing? Have you ever seen an entity, an angelic, a demon, anything like that? Has I'm going to tell you something that ever- we was doing. Uh, we was in Miami. And uh, we was in Miami for a video shoot. We had a song on the on the album, the last show we first called "The Plan." And if you've never seen the video, the video is out now. YouTube it's Sons of Man, "The Plan." We had a video that we was running around in boats and doing all this crazy stuff. And uh, when we, we was shooting the video, we was doing the video for that. It was me, priest, and all of us. We sitting on the beach. We was on the beach, and uh, we stand outside. It was like we had to meet at a club for a minute for some, for something. So we we stand it's like really crowded, really bad. So the club was like right across the street from the from the from the from the, from the beach and all that. So we we stand in there and um we seen UFOs come I mean literally they that was my first time I seen a UFO with my own eyes and I was shook. I was crazy shook. I'm like I can't even believe this. And um and it came out really out like it wasn't hot and out. it wasn't hot it came out and then we was asking people like we, we, we pointed to it like do you see that right there and they didn't see it we like we, we looked at it until we started live we like they ain't meant to be seeing this and um it, it came out you would have thought it was a, a film a, a movie being done with the way it came out <laughs> and we we like yo they they're not hiding right now they came right out it came all the way out and um and went back and we was looking, we stood there for a while. We was looking, we was like, this is so funny. And we like, you know, all these people, it was a crowd. I mean, at least about a thousand people standing outside the club. And then when we asked them, did you see that? And they like, yeah, y'all bugging out, y'all bugging out, ain't nothing in the sky. We like, ain't nothing in the sky, you gotta be bugging. A whole thing came up, it lit up, it had, I, you know how it's described in the Bible, how it describes in, uh, who was that, Zachariah? Or Zachariah? He described it with eyes like all Ezekiel. around it. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly how it looked. It. That's how we knew. We said, "Okay, Ezekiel first chapter." It's, it's exactly what the description of it. And um, he 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 described it exactly how it was, and we was like that's that's exactly what that had to be. And uh, it came out and went back in, and um, we knew because we like, is there any planes or airports? Or do? So we started to ask questions. Is there any airports over there or around here or anything like that? And, get, and the security is like, nah, 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 no, nah. There's nothing like that over there. And uh, he like, I seen it too. So, so then we started like, we like, okay, okay. So, so we not alone. So, so he said he like, I seen, I seen what y'all seen. So we like, okay. So we not bugging out now. And um, that was that from from there. I was who. Yeah. I was done in. <laughs> so now, now we'll go back to Ezekiel. Like, I got to see what they was talking about there. Because Zachariah was in. He explained being in one. So I'm like, okay. I'm like, okay. So Ezekiel described what it would look like. And, and then, then Zachariah was talking about being in one. He was in one and talking about being in it. And um, the description kept going on. Cause in Revelation, then they start talking about how how they look getting off of it. So I'm like, this is crazy now, and um, it is, it is because the descriptions kept they, they kept happening, and they see these encounters, and these these encounters is not 
See, they spooked it out when they said to call them aliens and all that. Yeah. That's where the spook they they threw the spook on it. And um chariots. Exactly, exactly. Chariots of fire, man. It's it's deep. Uh and what does that do for your music, man? It really takes it to another level, right? Another level, you which don't is why rapping about the same stuff that everybody else is rapping about. You're talking about you can actually do a song about encountering these beings watching over you like you could do a whole and that the 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 level of creativity is out of this world quite literally right as the, if you listen to my heaven razor album that's where i was that's that's what brought that influence to that whole album was was i was going through all of that i was finally getting out now i had to get it out of my system because i like sitting there with all this information i like the stuff that i was talking about in that album i was talking about Back then, I had put that album out. That was around 2010. So that was around 2010, before that I had to record it. So it was like 2008, 2009, I was recording that. So in, in that album, I was talking about a Barack Obama. He wasn't even running for president yet. And because um, Bush, at that time, Bush was still president. And um, I was talking about, in that album, Fans like, yo, how was you, yo, you was talking about Barack Obama in this album and he wasn't even president yet. Because I was doing major study. I was studying so much. And um, every man scriptures, the scriptures was telling you, the scriptures to me is like a future newspaper. It's like <laughs> a newspaper to the future. And um, it'll tell you exactly what, what's going to happen and everything. It's just not going to name it what you, what you call it today. Yep. It's not going to describe it as that, but it's there. It's the technology, man. It's like if you showed up, you say if, if you showed up 200 years ago, let's just say 200 years ago, you showed up with an iPhone and showed those people that the, the technology just of an iPhone. I say 200 years ago, a thousand years ago. Hey, let's say 20 years ago. You show up on the scene 20 years ago with an iPhone. Like the way technology is progressing, yeah, you know, it's the, yeah. it's the same I'm way. I'm glad like, you said that because it talks about something about in the hand, being in your hand. <laughs> in uh, that's that's Revelation. It talks about in your hand, and um, it don't call it a phone or nothing, but it does tell you that. Um, yeah, a lot of people think it's the microchip, man. Like you were talking it, about, you know, exactly. It's not. It's not. It pretty much. It's what every today. Nine out, of, nine, nine out of ten people got an iPhone or a smartphone in their hand today. That's like a wallet today. Yep. Yep. You Nobody don't, buy, go, you no, they don't, they don't go nowhere. I don't nowhere keep cash without a smartphone. I don't keep cash. You, you don't have to today. You got Bitcoin now. Yep. PayPal. <laughs> For real. You got digital money now. It's crazy. So as far as like we're talking about um, the Elohim, you know, we call the we call them Elohim, mm -hmm. cherubim, seraphim, uh, th these type of entities that are watching over us. I think they have our greater good in mind. I think that they are the angelic beings out of the Bible. Like you said, we read the Bible, we, we read about these entities, and then we go out and we see them flying around our night sky, right? Making contact, just like they contacted the prophets and disciples of the Bible. They were yes, because they was there they the whole meditate. time too. And that's yep. how Egypt, what happened with Egypt too. And um, that's where the whole thing with the giants come from. Mm -hmm. The it giants. Gets, it gets deep. Mi yes, because they, the um, they call them what they called them. Um, the Nephilim. Yes, that's where I was going because you had the <laughs> ser Seraphim and Nephilims is the other ones. And um, there's a bunch of them that people don't even know about, man. Like the Malakim, the Raphaim, mm, bro. Like mm -hmm. it gets really deep, right? And that's why the doors. You ever wonder why, like, why if these people were so small back then? Why the doors are so big? Yeah, the doors was huge. And um, look at look at the caskets for the um, for the pharaohs. Elongated skulls, all of, all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, history's deep, man. Some 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 stuff went on, bro. That uh, that a lot of stuff got covered up too. A lot of secrets got covered up too. 
that the rulers like, know about. You know what I'm saying? The Thirteen mm-hmm. bloodlines, the people who have been here since the beginning. The, yeah, the, yeah. Because I remember it was, the other thing was this planet Nibiru. Yeah. Yes, the planet Nibiru in 2012 was 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 going was it did, we we passed it already, but it was it didn't happen yet. But that was like a big deal back then. Did, okay, let me ask you this about 2012. That was a big thing. Did anything for you happen in 2012? Do you feel like spiritually you crossed the precipice? Did, was there a global awakening, a shift in consciousness, even if it was planned or spiritually? Did you, you know did what you happened? Feel anything, with, or, for me or did in, it just miss the ball? In that year, that year for me was interesting because that's when I got out of the wheelchair and got up and started walking. Heck yeah. I can never forget 2012. And, um, yeah, that's awesome, man. You had to just, just to bring everything back into perspective again, you had to learn how to use your body again and learn how to talk. I couldn't talk. I couldn't talk, couldn't walk. You are a I'm rapper a- by profession. You 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 were a rapper, and you had to learn how to talk again. What was it like, man? Just bringing it back. What was it like the first time grabbing that microphone and going back on the stage? Like they they captured that in the documentary. But yes, what was that's that like, a, my man? first performance is in the movie, and um, it's like it's like being brought to 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 being a child again, and got to start all over. Scary, man. Very scary. Very scary. And it takes a lot of dedication and focus for that. You had to learn how to speak. You had to learn how to walk. When you went back out there for the first time, um, what, what type of feelings, man? Like, what were you pretty sure every feeling in the book, really? Exactly. And um, because in the beginning, it's like people would come to visit me and they like, I feel weird around you because you're the main talker out of all of us and you just don't even say nothing now. Mm. And I don't even, I'm not, I'm not used to you being like this. And um, when I kept hearing that, I was like, okay, then I got to do something about this. Cause these are people that know me. So, so they're like, wait, I'm, I'm like, I can't believe I'm sitting with you for hours and you're not talking. This is, this is weird to me. And um, that kind of stuff will push me to, to do what I got to do. And yeah. when I got around, you know, I had, I had a circle of people that made me stronger, too. And um, the stronger I got, the, be- the, the better I got and faster I got at things. And um, then I started recording again. That's beautiful, man. And it's beautiful, like you said, that it is captured in the documentary. I thought it was going to be something that was filmed recently and just kind of looking back. But they documented this whole experience for you. Mhm. It's just so happened that it, the way it happened was like the time was crazy. It's beautiful, man. We had just won. We had won some awards already too for the film. Uh, the Hollywood Verge. We, we won the Hollywood Verge Festival, and uh, we did the um the we won the People's Film Festival in Harlem. We just um. We just did the world premiere at the Magic Johnson Theater in Harlem, and we won the um, the festival for that, the award for that. And um, it's like about two or three more that we had got so far. And um, they was telling me, like, other director was just letting me know. They're like, "Yo, the type of story you have, man, it can't even be written." And um, yeah. you 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 have a black story, man. And um, they're like, this is going to do well. This this movie going to do well for you. So you went from Hellraiser to Heavenraiser. Um, correct, in, correct. In the, um, in the um, documentary, we see you at a church, getting real emotional. It's an emotional time in the church. Where does, what, does Christ fit into all this for you? Because I see that you were uh, pushing a Christian rap label as well. Where does, where, where does Christ, Messiah, Yehoshua, Yeshaya, like wh- where does he fit in into all this for you? That's who brought me back to finish, and um, that's that's the, that, that's the main thing of, that revolves around everything that happened, and um, because the first thing that, that I was told was like, "There's something planned for you. God got a plan for you," because 
the doctor told me was to, he had a whole conversation with me about that. He said, cause most people, he said, most people don't make it here in time for me to even catch it. And he's like, you got something. They got, she said, God got something planned for you, man. Just be ready for it. He was talking to me and um, I was listening and I was sitting there cause I was in a coma for a few, few, few weeks. And, uh, but I could hear, I could hear and see, but I couldn't talk yet. So, so you know, people were sitting in a room with me, talking, talking to me, but I couldn't talk to them. And but they, you know, they could just see, they, they could tell I was alive, you know, because I was looking at them. And um, he brought me back because I didn't know what was happening in the beginning. And the first thing I did when I couldn't figure that out, I went into prayer, deep, deep prayer. And I called, I called on his, his, his holy name. So I got, that's the only thing I could do right now. And, um, and then the next thing you know, I was being put in a, a wheelchair. And I didn't know why. And then I had to be explained to, to me what happened. Because I was looking. I'm like, I don't understand this. Why, 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 what am I even doing in the hospital? And why are y'all putting me in a wheelchair right now? Because now I was able to, to talk because now since I've been in the hospital, I had therapists to show me. I had a speech therapist. I had a physical therapist to show me how to walk and do things. So so now I was starting to pull like, okay, now I'm trying to, trying to understand like what happened because I don't understand why I'm, what is going on right now. And why is everybody that's looking at me crying? And um. Uh, what is everybody even doing here? I couldn't understand. I'm like, why is everybody even in here for? And why everybody that I see is crying when they look at me? I couldn't understand it. And then when they put me in the wheelchair, I really was like, I like this don't make no sense. Why am I even in the wheelchair? Because I'm thinking everything was regular. I didn't know nothing happened yet. And um, they had just finished surgery and everything. And um, by that by that time. I got home, I touched my head for the first time. And I felt the whole, the whole, uh, the scar was there. And I was like, I couldn't, I was like, what I got a scar on my head for? I couldn't understand. Then, 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 you know, then, then they started explaining, we're going to tell you what happened. We're going to talk to you. We're going to tell you what happened to, what, 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 what happened to you. And um, so, so, so you can know what's going on. Cause I was like really, really asking a lot of questions because it was weird to me, and um, and I went into prayer. I went into heavy, 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 heavy prayer, and it's crazy because it's like my prayers was being answered f- firsthand, straight up. You was close, straight, straight up, straight up. I think, I think when you, go, I think it's a. Certain things are a test for certain things for us, and we either panic or go into a certain panic, and we don't concentrate on what we should be doing at that time. But it was a test. It was a lot of it was a test. So some tests going on, and um, I was like, okay, I see what's going on, and um, because my prayers was being answered like straight up, and I was it was getting scary. Start to get scary. I'm like, this is crazy now. He was with me the whole time and uh, walked me through the whole thing. And um, once I understood it, I calmed down. Cause then, then I was I was piecing it all together. Cause once I'm like, okay, so I was 33 when this happened. I'm like, oh, okay, cause that's what when, when that happened. I'm like, okay, cause when it happened to him, he was 30, 33 in the third. So I'm like, okay, now I'm starting to now I'm starting to put it all together. I'm like, okay. And then when I said I wanted to change from the hell to the heaven, and it all happened to me. I'm like, okay. And uh it was like spiritual warfare. Yeah. What have you been seeing since then, man? Because like we were talking before we went live, just like hip hop needs what we're bringing to the table. It needs spirituality. It needs to know how to get connected with God, not just to to thank God in your music, but like 
Here's the process. Here's how you stargaze. Here's how you go into prayer. This is how you meditate and, and, and commune with your creator. Like it needs that. Hip hop's missing that. So they to made, bring they, that to the table. Man. You said the key right there. It's missing exactly what's wrong with the everything today. It's missing that. And um they made it where you where you where you ashamed to talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the very thing that will set you free. That's the very thing that you go to when you have a near death experience like you had. You went straight into that communion. Thank God that you had the spiritual upbringing. Thank God that you had the knowledge on how to survive and not to panic and not to freak out and not to get depressed and shake your fist at God, right? That's an mm -hmm. that that option, could, right? Th that would have killed me. Panicking would have killed me. And uh, if, if I'd have panicked, I wouldn't have had enough time to go into, into, into prayer. I wouldn't know what to do. Panicking would have threw me off. Yep. But it's a bigger, threw it's, me off. It's, a, it's a bigger calling, man. It's a bigger reason, bro. And we see like, you know, being encouraged like throughout the scriptures and stuff, we see like the prophets and the dis disciples and apostles like could nothing stop them until they did what they were supposed to do. Now, there was all types of things and hardships and, and troubles and stuff that came that looked like they should have gave up. Looked like they should have threw the towel, man. Mm -hmm. But he said, "No, not yet. I got you. This, you know, these things are gonna are, are gonna come against you." You know, the scripture said, and it it comes out to be true when it says that no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. It doesn't mean that it's not gonna form. It doesn't mean that people ain't gonna try to take you out. It's gonna happen, but it's the rest is on you after that. Yeah, what are you gonna do with it? It said, "The faith of a mustard seed is all you need." You know how small a mustard seed is? <laughs> you don't get no smaller seeds in that. Yep. Just a little bit of faith. For real. A and that's what, say, that, that, that's what pretty much I felt saved my whole life. Because at that time, I was being tested. So what would you say, man, to like, if anybody's watching this, man, there's people, trust me, they're watching, bro. There's people watching who are having. A well, I'm going to be time. honest with you. I'm a living testimony right now. You want to no, just say, look, I said all I needed to say. This is it. I'm a living testimony and, and my movie is too. Definitely. That, that, that's, that's what, that's exactly. See, 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 it can't, he did it where it can't be hidden. You put it, put it in Hollywood, and go put it all over the planet. You know, everybody, everybody gonna see this. They yeah. gonna see this story and know it's real, and know he's still, 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 and and it's called risen, and um, cause he's still here, and um, you got to meet him halfway. Take a step towards him, or take a step towards you, right? Mm -hmm. Well, your latest album, bro, is called Equilibrium. You want to talk about that a little bit? How does how? I mean, there's a lot of a lot of time has passed. You've been through a lot since some of your earlier work, and then you come out with with this latest album that just dropped. What? How does it compare to to the older stuff? And and what's what what's new that you're bringing to the table? Is is there a lot of gratitude in this album? Would you call it a yes. Christian rap album? I mean. It's a conscious hip hop album. Mm -hmm. It's a very, it's I'm gonna say conscious spiritual hip hop album, and um, uh, and it's 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 real music. It's real music. It's like not no trap music, all that kind of weird stuff. <laughs> this is is it's like this is real hip. If you want real hip hop music, I advise you to get it because it's real. It's pretty much it's like the the soundtrack to what I'm talking about right now, and and and, and the soundtrack album to the movie is gonna be crazy too, and um, that's produced by Shroom from Amsterdam, my brother over there in Amsterdam. We connected um, right before all this happened too, and um, that's a very emotional. The soundtrack is very emotional too. The movie is the soundtrack. Everything is like that with this project, Rizzo. Everything. I you know the director, Frank Meyer, could catch it. Every priceless moment that could have been 
been on film for for me for this. He he captured and did a wonderful job. My whole team is is wonderful because they put the story together in a way that that I couldn't even imagine. That's what's up, man. Do your story is an inspiration to many. Um, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. You know what I'm saying? People who are going through a, a rough time, people having a, a rough time, they want to give up hope. And they, you know, they like to think that these stories are just for other people that, you know, God yeah, and, and helps other people and not don't, them, don't, you know? don't give it the, the, the most high is watching everything that you, he's with you the whole time. And, and so don't give up on him. Do not, do not give up on him. Cause he never gave up on you. Exactly. Brother, I appreciate you coming on, man. I really enjoyed this conversation, man, to really get, get to pick your brain for a little bit. Is there anything that we didn't talk about, man, whether it's theology? We can go as long as you want, but anything that we didn't talk about? No, nah, I, I kind of liked it so much because we did everything. I was thinking of, thinking about talking about you and natural truth seeker with it. Hey, man, you is. You. you is, man. You're going to go far with this. Thank you, and, then you, and you got my support, too, with this. You know, you give me these links and everything to it, and I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna put it everywhere. Go do. And, um, we gonna go, go do, hard man. body. Keep keep pushing this. Yeah, man. We gotta do a track together too. <laughs> we make that happen too. That's what's up, brother? All right, man. Uh, RisenDocumentary. dot com. Um, your site. You got a couple sites. You have the yeah. Uh, Hellraiser Digital. Hellraiser Digital. dot com. Uh, take you to everything that's going on that, that you heard me talking about. Everything from music, the record companies, and um, videos, clothing. I have toys. I got toys, clothing, and laptop bags. I got laptop backpacks, the heavy razor laptop backpacks. And I got, I got a movement called Ghetto Government Officials. And I have toys called Dunnies too for for that too. What's up? Yes, right. and uh, the clothing is iapparelstore dot com. You get the clothing, the Hellraiser loyalty is silence hoodies, and uh, we working on more clothing right now too. The ghetto government official clothing is coming soon too. That's what's up, brother. Thank you for coming on the show, man. We'll be in touch, and uh, I really enjoyed this, man. Thank you. Thanks a lot, man, for having me. You're welcome, bro, man. We're going to stay in sync, man. Let's do it, brother. Shalom, shalom. Peace, bro. Shalom, shalom. Wings up, man. Heaven Razor, ladies and gentlemen. Wu-Tang affiliate. Wu-Tang killer bees. Oh, man, we were talking uh, just just before the show and, like, talking about just uh, conscious hip-hop and how this is what music needs. This is what hip-hop needs, you know? And I told him, like, straight up, like, I'm from the South. I'm from, I live in Alabama. I'm from New Orleans. Like, I didn't grow up on Wu-Tang. Like, we had a Wu-Tang album around, but honestly, I grew up on Master P, UGK, Bone Thugs and Harmony, a lot of gangster rap that um, was nothing like Wu-Tang and what they brought to the table. And st stylistically, it was so different than what I was used to. So it's been cool because... Like, I knew who they were, always knew who they were, you know, all the big names in, in Wu-Tang. But then as I grew up and then had a spiritual awakening, I'm just now getting into the, all of that stuff. And the beautiful thing is that there's so much of it. If anybody affiliated with Wu-Tang, right, the Sons of Man, Heaven Razor, Killer Priest, LCOB, the Lost Children of Babylon, like... All of these, these, this movement of this spiritual and conscious hip hop that's bringing life to something that in the mainstream they're promoting and they got billions of dollars behind pushing death and killing and negativity and all of this stuff. But to see brothers like him uh, still, still doing it, dude just put out a new album, Equilibrium, and it's still just as good as any of the older stuff which is awesome. So you can be actually be able to go back and dig up this older stuff. I don't listen to, to new music. I don't. Uh, I, I only thing I listen to is pretty much is nineties music for the most part. And, um, I'm stuck on 
90s LCOB, early 2000s LCOB. Uh, that stuff came out like in 99. And so that stuff, you have music that stands the test of time, music that has longevity to it. Like you can put it back in. There's those albums, right? There's so many singles that are here today and gone tomorrow. Yeah, they're good songs. They made a lot of money. Sonically, they, they know how to be like the Pied Piper, come in, win the hearts of a generation with the sound, but then the, the message and things that are coming behind the music is corrupting people. There's no life in it. It's, it's birthing death in people and, 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 and promoting death and sickness. So when you have people who are bringing spirituality, Christ consciousness, God consciousness, God hop, these people are teaching you biblical prince, uh, principles and precepts and you don't even know it. Like they're breaking down the scriptures to you in their music, but they break it down poetically, metaphorically in such a beautiful way that it, it shows you the creativity behind it. And it, you don't have to repeat yourself over and over. Drugs, women, killing, shooting. That stuff's played out. All, all these people are trying to do is come up with new ways to tell those same couple of stories of killing. And I, I'm the best. If I hear one more backpack rapper floss about how they're the best rapper and nobody can touch them. There's a million rappers saying the same thing and stealing from one another. Bring something new, man. Go into the ether. Go into the spirit realm. Pull out some lyrics and bring them back and put them to a beat. Do that. That's what these brothers are doing, man. Evan Razor, bro, you got my support. We're definitely going to work together soon, man. I've been following his work for some time uh, and uh, it's awesome. It just, just happened to work. And you know what? I reached out to him some time ago. Um, I didn't reach out to management. I tried to reach out through uh, social media, but I don't think he got my message. But um, I listened to the people, man. Like somebody, I, I have, I can go back through my messages and see who it was. But somebody reached out to me who listens to the podcast and was like, hey, Heaven Raised has got a documentary out. Why don't you reach out to him? And it's like, I already have, man. I already reached out to him. He said, but you know what? Since you're telling me, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it again. I reached out to him, management. They got the documentary. Everything come out good. We got him on the show. This dude is a legend. Um, and and I'm, I feel privileged to uh, introduce my fan base, introduce the podcast listening audience to their work. And he's not lying. Like, go back. There's gems out there. Him, Killer Priest, like, hands down, man. Like, new level, new level stuff. Even a lot of it is... Some years old, like 2004, 1999. I'm listening to LCOB stuff from 99, for real. Like, that's what I listen to. And it's gems. Most of y'all haven't even heard of it. The Equividium, where light was created by LCOB. Go back. Go back and listen to the, these gems. Checking out the chat. The chat has been going off about, you mentioned Nephilim, and everybody's going in on, on some Nephilim uh uh, giants and stuff like that. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also afterwards, everybody's going in on the giants and Nephilim. Um, somebody says, uh, you got a Celebi back there just chilling. Yep. Yep. Hey, that, that, that Celebi story is deep for me, man. I got that Celebi for a reason. Um, and it has to do with synchronicity, David Wilcock and Pokemon synchronicity, David Wilcock and Pokemon. Quick story, I'll go ahead and get that out just so we talked about it. So essentially, when I was having that awakening back around 2011, things were going getting deeper. I was already thought I was deep. But as it, I got deeper, man, I just started having all of these crazy encounters and experiences. Um, started hearing about synchronicity. Start, I found the work of LCOB, Lost Children of Babylon, their music. Started listening to Coast to Coast. Started having my own encounters, found David Wilcox, 2012 Enigma. I'm watching that, and uh, David Wilcox is talking about these, um, this ringing in the ears that you would hear. And, you know, when you get quiet, some people hear this really loud ringing sound in your ears. And he went back to ancient Egypt, and he showed, like, these different writings and stuff in these diagrams on how that when you would get quiet and you focus on the ringing in your ear, that you can actually time travel and leave your body by focusing in on that pitch, that frequency. 
we put tones and frequencies like that on to meditate to anyway, right? But if you get quiet, some people hear that that high pitched noise. I hear it. So I, I that was the first time I heard somebody speak about that in a documentary or, or ever. And I've always heard that sound when I every time I would get quiet or try to go to sleep at night, it would be so loud. They say it's a medical term called tinnitus. I had it as a little kid. You know, I'd get quiet and you hear it. Something, it's a tune, man. It's a tone. You're in tune with the frequency. I watched the 2012 Enigma. David Wilcock mentioned it. Uh, the next day, come home from work. I'm laying down on the floor and I'm watching um, po the Pokemon movie with my daughter. We're watching po Pokemon and all these little creatures are flying around and stuff. And there's a little creature in the back, back there, Celebi. He's a Pokemon. And, and he was in the movie. And so they were being chased through the woods by the bad guys. Like they were trying to catch the Pokemon so they can use their power for evil. They're chasing Celebi and the kids. They're running through the forest. And they stop. And they heard this loud pitch, high pitch frequency in their ears. They said, what is that? It's Celebi. If we focus on the tone, we can time travel. We can leave. And they got quiet and they focused on the the tone and they held Celebi or caught him or whatever and they traveled right when they were fi were fixing to get attacked by the bad guys they heard that tone and they time traveled I was like this is synchronicity and that was like some of the first synchronistic things that started happening in my life and it would start happening like crazy I mean a lot of times when people start having these synchronicities it starts freaking them out like you say a friend we just said earlier like it's we laugh at it now we have synchronicity so much now we laugh at it. My daughter still don't understand. She just, she laughs as we get a kick out of it. We'll say a phrase and literally one second later, the TV, somebody on the TV will say the same phrase or something on the radio or you'll say something and there'll be a billboard that passes and it has that same phrase that you said. Crazy stuff. It gets really deep. And if you follow the signs with synchronicity and, and, and follow that stuff, man, you will be where you're supposed to be. I, I truly believe that. I truly believe that that's how God speaks. I believe it's God's breadcrumbs. Like Hansel and Gretel. You go through the woods, you put them breadcrumbs out. I believe it's God setting out breadcrumbs, letting you know, like, hey, you're, you're on the right path. You're headed in the right direction. Just letting you know, hey, look at that sign. Hey, look at this. Hey, open this door. Close that door. And you start seeing these signs, man. Follow the signs. So that's what Celebi represents for me. The awakening synchronicity for me so I, I found that doll so i had to buy it man this is beautiful it reminds me you know what i'm saying there's different things that we have of symbols of tattoos of monuments in the scriptures man the israelites would um conquer a hardship or go to another nation or whatever and they would build a monument and that monument was that every time that they would see that it would remind them of the thing that god did in their life and it's the same way with us, we get tattoos or you wear the symbol of a cross on your neck. And every time you see that cross, it reminds you of the work that God did for you. So it's beautiful. Um, I, I, I've got many more stories about synchronicity and about how you follow the signs. Like somebody, somebody's mentioned in here says, how does Pokemon synchronicity show you on the right path? Sometimes my synchronicities seem meaningless. Sometimes they do. I mean, because like you would think that and I've heard people say, pay attention to the information that comes through because it's key information. Not all the time. Sometimes it's just that pat on the back. It's just the, the humor of God just to let you know, hey, you're not alone. I'm watching you like you're going the right direction. But sometimes the information that comes through is legit. And it'll lead me to this next synchronicity. This was for a friend of mine. This was a guy some years ago who uh, he was into my music, he was into my teachings and what I bring to the table, um, but his church wasn't. Like He was on the fence about me. He liked the spiritual concepts and what I bring to the table, but some stuff, aliens, nah, kundalini, nah, like you can't go there. There's those trigger words for some people. Some people, everybody has their own triggers. So he had his and he's like, nah, I like True Seeker, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to um, reach out to him because he was thinking about messaging me and actually wanted to contact me. And and um, so he was thinking about doing it, but he said no. Um, he's sitting in traffic. He's actually at, at, at a red light in traffic in Louisiana. Over two and a half hours away. 
and he's scrolling through his Facebook about to message me, but he's like, no, nah, I'm not going to message him. I don't want to contact him because I may take you down through there. So he looks up in front of him. There's a Seek Truth bumper sticker. I had a bunch of bumper stickers back in the day. A big Seek Truth bumper sticker. Proofsticker.com. He's sitting in traffic in Louisiana. Debating to call me. He looks up. He sees the bumper sticker. He says, okay, God, I'm going to call him. So he ends up calling me. He gets in touch with me. Sets up a meeting. Uh, we plan this big event. We go to, to Louisiana uh, to do, uh, do a float tank experience that we document it. And we went to his house. He had us over. We got to go visit and pray with him and get in the spirit and fellowship about what God was doing in our life. And we started a relationship. Pay attention to the signs. Sometimes it's just a pat on the back. Sometimes it's about walking through the doors that God's opening for you. And um, sometimes we need, you know, in Christianity, they call it confirmation. The Lord gave me confirmation. I was going to call True Seeker, but then I seen the sticker. He just confirmed it for me confirmation everybody has their own way of putting it synchronicities and things like that so celebi david wilcock the information that came through yeah those tones frequencies meditating it means a lot to me monuments we look at stuff i bought like i said i bought that you wear a symbol of a cross you look at the cross it reminds you of the work that christ has done in your heart um any 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 monument, any anything that that you build, it, it reminds you of something. I mean, even in the scriptures as well, you have the mezuzah uh, that they would put on the the doorpost, and they would he would say, wear it around your neck that you won't forget about it. When you go and look in the mirror and you look at your necklace, it's a mezuzah. It's the Torah. It's the commandments rolled up within the mezuzah that you don't forget it. Tied a string around your neck so that every time you grab it, every time you see it, it reminds you, man. We have to be reminded. A lot of people are like against graven images and symbols and things like that, but they're very much a part of our lives and they only have the power that we give them. Any type of symbol. Good, the bad, the ugly, whatever it is, it's what it means to you. It's we give the symbol power. We're the ones who do, who, who do that. So, yeah, man. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. I really enjoyed this interview. It was a good one, man. Um, Danny, shout out to Danny. Shout out to all my people who was hanging out in the School of the Mystics tonight. We went straight from School of the Mystics straight into a podcast. So thank you guys for uh, being patient with me. We cut it a little bit short, too, just because of time restraints. But thank you guys, man. I, I really enjoyed our short conversation. We got a I wanted to keep going. We we had some good info in there. And so those of you who want to get that uh, that episode of the School of the Mystics or listen to that, we record it and we upload it to Patreon. That's part of the membership services and stuff. So uh, for a dollar a month, you get access to that stuff. So if you'd like to support my um, my work, um, check out patreon.com backslash true seek at any level of giving. You get a bunch of perks. Um, Austin Peterson says, what about Corey Good? Hmm. That's something when we mentioned David Wilcock, right? Um, man, I don't know even know if I should mention that. Aaron Fowler. There he is. I got a, if those of who are watching right now, I have a big shout out to Aaron Fowler. I did an interview on his show. He'll be on my show coming up on the third of next month. I believe it is. But anyway, check my stream schedule. Aaron Fowler, yes, the shaman. He's going to be on my show. I was on his. We had a really good conversation, kindred spirits. So uh, shout out, brother. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Um, Corey Good. Hmm. See, there's the debate thing. I want to seek peace with all men. I want to I want to get in them circles, right? I want to, uh, I don't want to. There's a check in my spirit about Corey Good. I'll just say that. You know, if he wants to come on here and talk about it, maybe I had never talked to him. And we'll say this, Corey Good has made, has taken away David Wilcox's credibility for me, whatever it is, Cor Corey Good has made me have less confidence in what, um, David Wilcox bringing to the table. I don't know. I think it's a charlatan. <laughs> I said it. Y'all wanted me to say it. Y'all wanted me to say it. Get him on here. Oh, I'd love to talk to him. Love to pick his brain. But something, you know, you get that little check, man. Something doesn't sit right. Something doesn't sit right. Aaron Fowler says, I agree. 
I would love for him to be telling the truth. I hope he is. It brings credibility to what we do. But I think if that people are making it up to sell stories, like we're trying to seek truth, right? We're trying to bring out the truth. And I hope that he is, but I really don't believe him. David Wilcox is a lot more believable. Um, Lentil Soup says, what are your thoughts on the Enneagram? I'm not sure what that is. Enneagram. E N N E A G R E. I'm not sure what that is. Um, trying to read some of these comments and try not to have dead air for the people listening on the podcast end. Because that sucks, right? Yeah. Um, D-O-H or do uh, says, yeah, I'll have an open mind or whatever. I'd, I'd love to talk to him. I hope he's telling the truth. You know, I want him to be telling the truth. I just don't think he is. You know, there's a lot of money in that and in, in, in that kind of stuff. And you have to watch a lot of the people who have those big budgets behind them, too. You really do. Just like anything. You got to you got to watch them, you know. Um, so at the end of the day, who knows? I wasn't there. I hope he's telling the truth. Tell him to come on the show. On top of that, um, maybe we'll get um, Mark Passio on the show. A lot of people have been messaging me, telling me to get Mark Passio on the show. Synchronicity, Mark Passio just added me on Facebook. He knows who I am. Maybe he'll come on the show. I'll message him. I've I've reached them. I've tried to reach out in the past, but obviously, like once you get a bigger platform, and now they want to come on your show. <laughs> Aaron Fowler says Passio would be awesome. Yeah, he just added me, man. I would love to have him on. That'd be cool. I'm really believing for Tessarian, man. I really I want to get Tessarian on. I've I've picked Jordan Maxwell's brain that I'm blue in the face. Honestly, like um, I've had him on my show. Jordan Maxwell's a beautiful soul. He really is. Um, but I want. I want to get Tessarian on here. You guys send those thoughts out to Tessarian. Y'all send the thoughts out. I'll send the emails. And let's believe for Michael Tessarian to come on here. Our lentil soup says, what's the schedule of the show? Stream schedule is uh, 10 a.m. Central, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, and then every now and then when there's uh, somebody who we need to get on ASAP, we'll go live whenever. So, um, there's some other stream dates that I do in between those Tuesdays and Thursdays, but every Tuesday and Thursday at 10 a.m. we'll go live with a guest. I'll try to go live some other days throughout the week as well. Thursdays at 7 p.m. Central, we do the School of the Mystics every Thursday, um, and then we have our um, we have Wednesday nights, which is I go live with Christy Lee on the Tap and Tune In show uh on her page she has a radio show on blog talk we do uh i run the switchboards there and we do a lot of prayer we get into some conversation then we get into prayer and energy healing and uh speaking blessings for one another on there so that's a really good spiritual time to come in there and get your spiritual fix there too so there's a throughout the week man we're forming a community where we have people in and out of our groups who go live um brother joshua fluman's part of the community he creates videos on YouTube. Um, Adam Starseed Bay, he goes live on Facebook, on our pages. Um, Aaron Fowler, he, him and his community, those guys go live. So between everybody affiliated with what I do and we just kind of cross promote and we have a, a good family. So there's always a community, somebody to reach out to um, just to let you know that you're not alone. And at the end of the day, if that's all it is, just to let you know that you're not alone with your encounters, with your beliefs, with your questions and with your doubts and stuff like that. At the end of the day, I think that's um, worth it, right? Just to be encouraged and know that you're not alone and grow and thrive with community. That's what we do with the School of the Mystics. We have a Discord channel. We're, we're live in that throughout the week, too, just having conversation. But, uh, yep, no one is alone, my brother. You're right. And I'm telling you, like, I keep saying that. That's powerful. You don't know how many inbox messages I get where people will say, um, you know, I thought I was alone. And I can only speak from my experience because I thought I was alone. They know other people were having these type of encounters, you know, needed somebody to talk to. That's where the music comes into play with being able to kind of uh, fix your mind on things above, heavily things. 
entertain yourself with these type of conscious ideas that are biblical concepts, that are Eastern concepts, that are spiritual concepts, to lift up yourself in songs and spiritual songs, as the Bible says. Sing spiritual songs. That's what we do. We make spiritual songs. David Jones Locker says we are all connected. Um, Austin Peterson says, like I said earlier, get Corey Good from my lab. That's who is David Wilcock. Get, get his info from. Get Corey Good from my lab. Yeah, my lab is deep, man. I believe in my lab. I really do. Adam Starseed says, yes, David Wilcock helped me on my journey in 2010, but I grew spiritually and he brought nothing more to me. True. But he is still helps those who are seeking truth. I, I agree. I agree. He got some good stuff, man. David Wilcox brings some good stuff to the table. And there's a lot of people who turned their back on him after 2012 and 20, you know, all the, he put out, um, probably became a millionaire through his 2012 books. And then it came and went. And a lot of people, you know, turned their back on him after that whole thing. But I really do feel like something happened in 2012, man. That was just my whole uh, birthing and going to deeper levels in the spirit. Um, Danny, uh, Danny Guerrero, my good brother, he mentioned that 2012 was pivotal for him. Um, Heaven Reza, Reza, he said that he, he learned how to walk again, took his first steps in 2012. I do believe that 2012 was a pivotal year for a lot of people. Have you seen Spirit Science on YouTube? Yep. Yeah, I've seen Spirit Science. I like some of that. I think that's kind of like what Adam said. Like, there's a lot of things that introduce you um, to the truth movement or to spirituality, and they're good for where where you were. But you know, I think you kind of I don't know. I don't know if we'd say graduate from things or you grow out of things. So, yeah, I don't. I don't. I mean, I know who they are. I watched several of them. I don't. I wasn't an addict or anything. I'm not a, was really big into David Wilcock. I'm still diehard Manly P. Hall. Still um, screaming his name as much as I can. Still um, a Jordan Maxwell fan and friend. He doesn't like that word fan. We've seen that on one of the last podcasts I did with him. Called him a Blavatsky fan. He didn't like that. Well, I didn't call him. As, man, a fan is a fan is a fanatic, but, you know, it's all good. to read some of these things and say yep we evolve from things yeah i mean you evolve you grow to the next level you as a stay dormant that's not life that's not kingdom that's not something that's alive anything alive it's going to be growing it's going to be evolving and expanding and i think that anything that we're doing that has life in it it's organically going to grow business wise spiritual wise friendship wise like everything we're going to grow together what's up abdul so yeah with that man i'm gonna go ahead and jump off here i've had a very long day and when this is a great end to a to a long day so uh with that i'm gonna say peace and shalom adam starcy he says 2012 was powerful i love you brother we're gonna do some more stuff man take you to the next level brother we're gonna do it thank you everybody for what y'all do and what you guys contribute thank you everybody who who supports me on patreon like i said without that i couldn't do that i couldn't be here without that you know i have fourteen thousand plus fans on facebook if everybody gave a dollar man we could do so much with that bro but it's a lot of people who it's a few people who give a lot so thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for uh supporting me over there and you guys are my enablers you enable me to do this there's something that you guys are getting out of this thank you guys and i there's a bunch over there check out my music if you haven't yet a lot of people don't even know I do music. Uh, check out my uh, music, spiritual, esoteric, hip hop. So, yeah, check it out. Um, transcend the physical, you old spiritual individual. Love you guys. We'll do it again soon. Shalom, shalom. I got to quit looking at the comments. I want to keep talking. Yo, so much Well, that does it for this episode, folks. To hear more episodes of the Truth Seeker podcast, head over to truthseeker.com. And if you're wanting to support the show and get rewards, go to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash truthseeker.